Hi, my name is Princess Marigal. I work with WEN. I'm a voluntary member with WEN. And today we have invited Rupert to join us uh, in this meeting today. And we'll all be meeting Rupert and know what he does um, with the PCC. And hello, Rupert, how are you today? Good morning. Well, I'm, I'm rather cold. It's a bit, a bit chilly out there, isn't it? It is, it is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's great to be here with WEN. I mean, I admire a lot of the so it's actually great to be here and chatting to you, Princess. Thank you so much, Rupert. Thank you for coming. And I hope um, the tea is helping the cold. It is. It's absolutely <laughs> great. <laughs> so, Rupert, for the diverse audience listening to us um, today, will you be able to tell us your role with the PCC? Oh, okay, well, police and crime commissioners have um, really two roles. So, it's a, it's a style says police and crime. So, as far as the police are concerned, I set the budget for the police, so I decide I don't know how much is going to be spent on police cars this year, how much is going to be spent on uniforms, um, how many police officers we're going to have, that, that side of things. But I also set the strategy, so that decides, uh, you know, are we going to put more emphasis on tackling uh, shoplifting, or are we going to put more emphasis on trying to tackle uh, violent crime, we're going to put more emphasis on trying to tackle crime in rural areas. So as far as the police are concerned, I'm quite a high level uh, strategic overview, but I also hold the chief constable to account for how he spends taxpayers' money. So, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't know, in terms of auditing the books, making sure the money is being spent on what it's supposed to be spent on, uh, and so on. Then the other part of the job, which is sort of the end crime, uh, that's looking after witnesses to crime, making sure they're okay, caring for victims of crime. Uh, but also doing quite a lot of crime prevention. So we fund things like target hardening, which is giving vulnerable elderly people window locks on so that they can make their houses more secure against burglary. Uh, we put up new street lighting if there's been uh, some problems with stalking uh, or attacks on people. We'll put up street lighting. So, so it's a really varied role. That's a huge role. <laughs> yes. How are you able to manage all this role? Well, um, I've got a deputy. Uh, whose name is Ronnie Mahal, who worked very hard supportively uh, in doing a lot of work, the work that we do. But I've also got staff. Uh, I, I don't pretend to do all the police. So when it comes to, um, let's say, checking the police and spending money on what they're supposed to spend, I've got a full-time accountant whose job is to do that. Um, I've also got uh, a team of people who are working in people's zones, one of which uh, is the uh, um, Bell Foundry up in Loughborough. Uh, and that's helping people, that's trying to support uh, social working groups within the community yeah. uh, and helping people who are rather vulnerable to, to get out. I've got the staff, um, oh, well, some of them are part time, so I suppose if you include all the part timers, 20, I think. So, uh, but you know, I make sure I make sure they all work hard. Uh, and as you say, it's a huge job, so the staff are really helpful. Oh, that's good to know. I mean, that's really great to hear. And also, I would like to ask you, how long have you been serving in the PC? Oh, um, this is my third year. Yes. Okay, so uh, I think the first year, to be fair, was really taken up with just learning what I'm supposed to do. Mm. And also meeting everybody. So I say I've got a staff uh, of about 20 people, yes. but there's nearly 4,000 work for the police force, uh, officers and uh, support staff. But also, we're commissioning services from a whole range of different charities and community groups. And between them, they've probably got about another thousand people, either volunteers or paid staff. So I can't get around and meet everybody. But I set myself the ambition when I started. Uh, I would go and visit every single department, every organisation, uh, and at least get to meet some people doing it. Because I think it's important um, that I get to know, you know, what. We see forensic experts on television, yes. you know, so what do they actually do? Um, I've been out on patrol with police in cars, I've been out on patrol with police in, on foot. Really important, someone in my position knows and understands what everybody who, throughout the organisation actually does. Oh, that's great. So your foot is on the job. Yeah. So you're not just sitting in the office, you're everywhere, making sure to know what each and every one is doing. That's great. I think it's absolutely vital. I mean, you can't do your job sitting in the office. That's right. That's right. And also, what do you love most? What do you enjoy most doing the job? Um, well, all of it's interesting. I think that's the first thing to say. Um, but when it comes to enjoyment, it's getting out and meeting people. Okay? So I'm the elected representative of the people. I get elected in. Uh, once every three or four years. 
Uh, but it's really important that I stay in touch with what the community likes to do. So one day a week, I almost forget the day job, and I go and meet community groups, I go and meet representatives of the people. So just for instance, um, this Thursday, uh, I'm going to Market Harbour, uh, I'm going to be meeting the Member of Parliament, I'm meeting two of the councillors, uh, I'm meeting two community groups. But every time when I do this, I also set aside at least one hour for what we, uh, we term free range time. And that's when I just go into maybe a cafe or a pub and start talking to people, explain who I am, ask their opinion. What do you think of the police? What do you think about the way the police are keeping law and order? Because it's really my job to find out what the public are thinking and then try and get the police force and various other groups to reflect that and do their job the way the people want it done. Oh, that's, that's great to know. And also, I would like to uh, talk about three areas of concerns um, to do with you. Yep. Uh, because you're the best person to talk to about this sure, areas. Absolutely. And the first one I would like to talk about, knife crime, mm -hmm. is on the increase and young people are fearful. And this is affecting their interaction with the police. Are there any strategies in place in 2000 or 2024 to overcome this fear? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> rather ironically, it isn't it? Because uh, just before I came here, uh, the head of the Violence Reduction Network, which is the body that looks after knife crime and tries to drive it down, uh, delivered to me the strategy. So um, they, they redo this every year take account of, like you say, changing circumstances, yes. um, because it's not just knife crimes going up, but knife crimes going up in urban areas particularly, yes. um, and also amongst younger people. Yes. So that's been a change.